But the route to net zero requires more cash and less politics. The International Energy Agency says record growth in clean energy technology, including solar panels and electric vehicles, means it's still possible to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But the IEA also says the world must invest nearly 4.5 trillion U.S. dollars per year in the transition to cleaner energy from the start of the next decade. Almost triple the amount expected this year. As part of China's efforts to reach net zero, the country has unveiled its plan to use more nuclear power. Under the proposal, nuclear power generation will account for 10% of the country's total electricity generation by 2035. That's equivalent to a carbon dioxide emission reduction of 920 million tons. So far, total installed nuclear capacity is less than 60 million kilowatts. But to meet China's target of carbon neutrality by 2060, it's expected to reach 400 million kilowatts by then, and that will account for around 18 percent of China's total electricity generation. Now, Kingsmill Bond is an energy strategist at the Rocky Mountain Institute, which specializes in energy sustainability. So, Kingsmill, great to have you on the show. I、uh, remember the IEA says a record growth in clean energy technology means it's still possible to limit、uh, global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But does this mean that the government will have to pay more? And we're looking at around 4.5 trillion dollars a year for the world. So the really exciting thing about the IEA analysis is, first of all, that the this growth is on track. So the solar panels are being installed. With huge growth taking place, specifically in the last two years, electric vehicles are also、um, being deployed extremely rapidly. They've gone from four percent to twenty percent in just a few years. Now above one third in in China, for example. And and furthermore, that actually the capital cost of this energy transition,、uh, from their calculations, is four and a half billion dollars. But we're going to save all of that money and more by not spending it on fossil fuels. So it's win win win. And the IEA recommends a 75% reduction in energy sector methane、uh, emissions by 2030. So we're looking at an estimated cost of 75 billion U.S. dollars. How can such a reduction be achieved? So to be clear, 75 billion is a lot of money, but it's two, according to the IEA, it's two percent of the windfall、mm -hmm. that the fossil fuel sector got as a result of Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine. So it's a,、um, it's, it's, it's. A very small amount of money compared to the amount of money that they earn. These、uh, the, the the oil and gas sector. Furthermore, 40 percent of that money is、um, actually it it comes at zero cost. So basically, you're you're saving as much from stopping the methane losses as it costs you to mend the problem. So the the key point is is that these numbers are not、um, they're not unachievable at all. They're extremely achievable. And I think this is a kind of general point about the energy transition: is that the the numbers, the economics for change, are adding up、uh, extremely well. And climate goals often encounter challenges, as we know, due to political considerations. So, how can governments in,、uh, implement the IEA's suggestion to separate climate action from geopolitics to effectively、uh, prioritize climate action? So, one one of the key points here is that. The, the the driver of change is not no longer simply climate. So there are many other reasons, four specific reasons why、um, governments now are lining up behind the rapid deployment of、uh, renewable technologies. The first is the economics. I mentioned basically this stuff is now cheaper. Solar is the cheapest electricity source in history.、Uh, secondly, you have the energy security angle. Everyone's got renewables. Not everyone has fossil fuels. That's particularly pertinent for China, of course, which lacks. Um, large amounts of oil and gas, but but has some、um, lots of solar and wind.、Um, the the third driver of、um, of change, of course, is pollution.、Um, people don't like having to breathe in all of that all that polluted air. And then the final and the, possibly the most important driver for many companies is、um, uh, advantage, industrial advantage. These are the industries of the future, and people who are like cattle in and or BYD in China. Are dominating these industries. Are dominating the industries of the future. There are lots of reasons to get behind change. It's not just、uh, it's not just climate. And speaking of China, I mean the country aims to supply around 10 percent of its electricity through nuclear energy by 2035. Is that achievable? Well, I mean, of course it's achievable because 
the, the global average is also around 10 percent. So China's now around five, it's going to go to around 10, about the global average. Um, the real issue with nuclear is cost. And, and, you know, it's a balancing act in every country in the world. It, nuclear is having to come in and compete against solar and wind, which are on learning curves. And, you know, it's just a question of, 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 of the cost effectiveness of deploying new technologies. Thank you very much for your insight. That is Kingsmill Bond and Energy Strategist at the Rocky Mountain Institute.